Welcome to another installment of History Of. If you're new here, please consider subscribing so that you never miss an installment. Today, we're going to be discussing the history of the U.S. Infantry Service Rifle. Uh, back in 1775, a bunch of dudes that wore wigs in public decided to revolt against the crown of England for good reason. And as such, a second group of dudes said, hold up, we're going to need soldiers and stuff because I'm pretty sure the English army is going to come and try to kill us for revolting. And thus, the United States Army was born. Then, a third group of dudes said, well, they're probably going to come by boat, right? So we should build some boats with cannons to shoot at their boats with cannons when they come so that they don't kill us with their cannons. And thus, the United States Navy was born. Then, a fourth group of Navy guys went out drinking in Philadelphia and said, the army thinks they're so cool because they have rifles and all we have are these silly swords. We're going to get our own rifles, start our own club, and the Navy's going to pay for it. And thus, the United States Marine Corps was born. And since that day, the Army and the Marine Corps were doomed to be in a constant flexing contest to determine who had the better rifleman. The answer to that debate is questionable and depends on the scenario. However, one thing is certain. Without the rifle, they'd just be guys who like to get into fights. A line from the Rifleman's Nightly Prayer even reads, Without my rifle, I am nothing. Today, we set aside our petty differences in inner service rivalry and take a look at that rifle itself. Small arms used by the American forces in the Revolutionary War were many and varied. However, at the beginning of the war, the British Shortland Service Musket, often referred to as a Brown Bess, was probably the most common musket on hand. In 1777, the French allied themselves with the American cause and began sending arms and equipment, most notably the caliber 69. The U.S. musket model 1795, the principal small arms used by the army in the War of 1812, was a copy of the caliber 69 French model 1763 infantry musket. These muskets were made at the armories of both Springfield, Massachusetts and Harpers Ferry, Virginia. The Model 1795 muskets produced by Eli Whitney incorporated all of the latest technological features such as a rounded hammer face and a slanted pan. Whitney delivered 10,000 muskets to the Army under a July 1812 contract. Muskets manufactured under this contract are marked in Haven on the lock plate. The U.S. Model 1816 musket was similar to the Model 1795, but incorporated enough new features to be given a new designation. These muskets were made at the armories of both Springfield, Massachusetts and Harpers Ferry, Virginia. This pattern of musket will continue to be in use up until the Mexican War. The U.S. Model 1842 musket was the first U.S. weapon made at both Harpers Ferry and Springfield armories with fully interchangeable parts. It was also the first regulation musket made in the percussion ignition system by the National Armories and was the last of the smoothbore 69 caliber muskets. A total of 275,000 Model 1842s were produced between 1844 and 1855. It's 103,000 at Harpers Ferry and 172,000 at Springfield Armory. The caliber 54 Model 1841 rifle was the first rifle made in the percussion ignition system at the National Armory. Until the Mexican War, it was only provided to militia rifle companies in various states. The Model 1841 was made by Harpers Ferry Armory from 46 to 55 with a total produced of about 25,000 arms. The weapon has a 33-inch brown barrel, which was made without provisions for attaching a bayonet. The walnut stock is distinguished by a large patch box on the right side of the butt, sometimes called the Mississippi Rifle. It owes this name to the successful use of this weapon by a Mississippi Rifle Regiment under the command of Jefferson Davis during the Mexican War. In July of 1855, Secretary of War Jefferson Davis authorized the production of a new 58 caliber rifle musket. This was the first rifled weapon produced for general issue by the U.S. Army. A rifle version was also produced to replace the M1841 rifle. Both the rifle and the rifle musket were equipped with the Maynard Patent Priming System, which used a roll of caps in the compartment in the lock that advanced when the weapon was cocked. The carbine was used by the cavalry, and numerous types were used during early parts of the Civil War. Three carbines came to be predominant by the middle of the war. The Sharps, which fired a 54 caliber paper combustible cartridge, or could be loaded with a bullet and loose powder. The Spencer, which was a magazine weapon that held several rounds of 56 caliber metallic cartridges in a tube in the buttstock. And the Burnside, which used a unique tapered 54 caliber metallic cartridge fired with a standard percussion cap. In all, more than 95,000 Sharps, 80,000 Spencers, and 54,000 Burnside carbines were purchased. 
The 45 caliber trapdoor rifle would remain in use with the regular army until 1894 and with the National Guard in various states until at least 1905. The version used the most by both the regular army and the National Guard was the Model 1884 with the long range Buffington rear sights. As the supply of socket bayonets began to dwindle in the late 1880s, the last model of 45 caliber rifle to be produced, the Model 1888, had a ramrod bayonet. The 45 caliber model 1884 carbine was replaced in 1896 with a 30 caliber carbine version of the Krag Jorgensen, although the trapdoor would continue to be used by the National Guard into the early part of the 20th century. The model 1896 Jorgensen carbine was used by the cavalry of the regular army and the majority of the volunteer cavalry units during the Spanish American War. A small number of Model 1898 carbines were produced and issued during the war as well, and in 1899, a newer version of the Krag, known as a Model 1899 carbine, would take the regular cavalry into the new century fighting insurgents in the Philippines. The United States Rifle Caliber 30 M1, also known as the Grand Rifle, in honor of its designer John Garand, was the first semi-automatic rifle in the world to be generally issued to infantry. The Army began looking for a replacement for the M1903 rifle almost immediately following the end of World War I. Research and development continued at Springfield Armory into the early 1930s with numerous problems being encountered. But on November 7, 1935, a new rifle was cleared for production. And on January 9, 1936, became the Army and Marine Corps standard as the M1 rifle. However, production difficulties and design issues continued to plague the new rifle. Finally, with a redesign of the barrel and a gas cylinder assembly in early 1940, the rifle was ready to go into full production. Output reached 600 rifles a day by January of 1941. The M1 was a gas-operated semi-automatic rifle that utilized an eight-round clip that gave United States forces a significant advantage in firepower and shot-to-shot -shot response time over enemy infantrymen in battle. The weapon was the principal infantry weapon used in both World War II and Korea. The Thompson submachine gun was designed by General John T. Thompson, who started at an auto ordnance corporation in 1916 for the purpose of developing his new weapon. Originally designed for trench warfare, the prototype submachine gun was produced too late for the war. In 1919, the weapon was officially named the Thompson Submachine Gun, and it was the first weapon to be labeled and marked as a submachine gun. The Thompson was also made famous in the streets of Chicago by bootlegging gangsters such as Al Capone and nicknamed the Tommy Gun. The M3 submachine gun, known as a grease gun, entered Army Marine Corps service on December 12, 1942. The weapon was produced by a guide lamp division of General Motors Corporation. Even at the development stage, the weapon's design focused on simplified production, employing metal stamping, pressing, and welding. The M3 was an automatic-only, blowback-operated weapon that fired from the open bolt. Fed from a 30-round detachable box magazine, the weapon had a crank-type cocking mechanism on the right side and a telescoping metal wire stock, which featured threads at both ends used to attach a bore brush so that it could be used as a cleaning rod. The Browning Automatic Rifle, commonly referred to as a BAR, was designed in 1917 by John M. Browning himself as a replacement for the French-made light automatic rifles. The BAR was a 30 caliber gas-operated, select-fire, air-cooled automatic rifle that fired from the open bolt fed from a 20-round detachable box magazine, and it laid waste to many a Nazi. The M14 was used by the United States Army, Navy, and Marine Corps for basic and advanced individual training from the mid-1960s to the early 1970s. The M14 was the last American battle rifle issued in quantity to the U.S. military personnel. Though it never got its day in the sun, it was rebooted for modern warfare tactics and used and deployed in special operations teams, and is still used and deployed in special operations teams to this day. The M16 rifle was the initial version first adopted in 1964 by the United States. It was a lightweight 5.56 millimeter caliber air-cooled gas-operated magazine rifle with a rotating bolt actuated by direct impingement gas operation. The weapon was constructed of steel with an aluminum alloy receiver and a composite plastic stock. The M16 was ordered as a replacement for the M14 at the direction of Secretary of Defense Robert S. McNamara over the objection of the Army. The Army began to field the XM16E1, which was an M16 with a forward assist feature, in late 1965 with most of them going to Vietnam. 
When the XM-16E1 reached Vietnam, reports of jamming and malfunctions in combat immediately began to surface. The XM-16E1 was standardized as the M-16A1 rifle in 1967, and improvements to the rifle, along with training and proper cleaning, diminished many of the problems, but the rifle's reputation continued to suffer. Moreover, complaints about the inadequate penetration and stopping power of the 5.56mm cartridge persisted throughout the conflict. The M16A2 entered service in the mid-1980s and fired a NATO standard 5.56mm cartridge. The M16A2 was a select fire rifle capable of semi-automatic fire or three-round burst. The burst fire mechanism utilized a three-part automatic sear fires up to three rounds for each pull of the trigger. The mechanism is non-resetting, which means that if the user fires a two-round burst and releases the trigger, the weapon will only fire a single round the next time he or she pulls the trigger. In theory, burst fire mechanisms allow ammunition conservation for troops with limited training and combat experience. Other features included an adjustable rear sight for wind and elevation, a slightly larger stock, heavier barrel, a brass deflector for left-handed shooters, and rounded handguards. A combination of the M16A4 and M4 carbine continued to replace existing M16A2 rifles used by the Army and the Marine Corps. The M16A4 incorporated a flat top receiver unit and a handguard with four Picatinny rails for mounting optical sights, lasers, night vision devices, forward hand grips, removable carry handles, and flashlights, etc. The M4 is a carbine version of the M16A1 with a small retractable stock and shorter barrel. The M4A1 was capable of fully automatic fire and was used as a submachine gun by selected individuals in situations such as house-to-house -house fighting. The M4 carbine is essentially the standard issue infantry service rifle for both the U.S. Army and the United States Marine Corps. The M4 is a 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO air-cooled stoner expanding gas system gas-operated magazine-fed carbine. It has a 14 and a half inch barrel and a telescoping stock with a 700 to 950 round per minute cyclic rate. With a plethora of available attachments and plug and play upgrades, the M4 has proven to be a tactical godsend for riflemen that employ it. All of these rifles have been used by the brave infantrymen of the United States Army and the Marine Corps in the pursuit and security of over 200 years of freedom, each playing an important role in many being the most technologically advanced weapon systems for their time. Ballistics is literally rocket science. And regardless of whose riflemen are better, <coughs> Army, I think we can all agree that these rifles, wielded by the brave men who employed them in combat, played a very significant role not only in the existence of the United States of America, but also in its continuance. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and Epstein didn't kill himself, Hua.